Welcome back. The special plea by Jacob Zuma to have his case postponed has succeeded. Now his team and Department of Correctional Services have been asked to provide reasons as to why they think the case will be prejudiced if it's conducted virtually. The case will be back in court from the 10th to the 13th of August for adjudication on the special plea. Here is the ruling. One, the trial is adjourned to 10 to 13 August. 2021 for the adjudication of the issues raised in the special plea in terms of section 106 1h of the criminal procedure act 51 of 1977 two the ruling in respect of the relief claimed in paragraph one of the notice of application dated 17 july 2021 is adjourned to 10 august 2021 three the directive of 15 July 2021 that the hearing of the special plea will proceed by way of a virtual hearing shall continue to apply unless revoked or revised as provided below. Four, the parties and the Department of Correctional Services are each invited to provide a list in point form and not exceeding two pages of double space typing of any considerations and or prejudice which might result, which they consider relevant to the decision whether the directive should be revoked or revised. Five, the list of considerations and possible prejudice referred to in paragraph four above must be complied with, sorry, must, must be compiled with reference to the circumstances that will prevail or are anticipated, anticipated to prevail as from 9 August 2021. All right, legal expert Ulrich Rue joins me now to discuss today's court ruling. Ulrich, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So overall, what do you reckon? Was this the uh, right decision or not? Hi, good evening, Sean. It is certainly an interesting argument uh, that was leveled by Jacob Zuma's legal representative saying that uh, they insisted on him being present at court whilst they argue the special plea. And I think that uh, the one thing that we must remember and that the viewers must also remember that this is not even the start of the trial yet. This is a, a plea that has been launched uh, by his legal team in which they say that uh, the state advocate Billy Downer um, should be removed from the matter and that he is not objective and he's, uh, he's conflicted and that he should not prosecute Mr. Zuma. So um, an interesting argument by them, to, to say the least. I think that, um, you know, the, the argument could very well just have been uh, uh, conducted via paper, so on the papers. And in other words, only legal arguments are brought before the court and that no testimony had to be leveled, but they insisted that he should be present. And I think that the, the judge at the end of the day, weighed up the, the prejudice that could be suffered by the state as well as by the accused and found that the look to postpone this matter for another 20 days is not going to really make a big difference. It has been coming for such a long time. And uh, one must remember also that, that Jacob Zuma is now in custody. So it's, it's you know, it's not as if, and albeit uh, on a different matter, it's not as if he's you know, out there living a, a free and luxurious life and, and frustrating proceedings. So uh, I think that was the decision made at the end of the day and uh, most likely a just decision. Uh, I don't think there's too much to be read into it, to be honest. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is that Jacob Zuma did not appear at the Constitutional Court regarding the Zondo matter. He didn't even, you know, provide the relevant information and arguments that the court wanted from him, but now he wants to be there in person for this matter. So, you know, many people will argue that it is another delay tactic, but the Jacob Zuma Foundation is rubbishing that. They say it's not the case. So let's talk about, you know, oral evidence in person via virtual. Is there any way that virtual is not as effective as oral evidence? I think in a, in a criminal matter, yes, I, I do think so. Uh, we have since the, um, you know, since the global pandemic hit the world, we have been conducting civil trials uh, online um, and, and, you know, um, the, it has been quite successful in my opinion because of the reason that, um, you know, it is arguments leveled uh, purely on, on the legal 
front and not really testimony led. So, you know, you bring an application and the legal teams argue before a judge. In a criminal matter, it is different because testimony is led by a witness and that testimony is tested uh, by the opposing side by a cross-examination to determine whether a witness is indeed telling the truth or whether they are being dishonest with the court. And there's a lot to be read into a person's body language, whether he's being evasive, whether he's you know, you can see whether a person is, is uh, under pressure, whether he's stressing about his answers, whether he is be trying to avoid certain questions. So in a, in a criminal matter, I think it does play a big role. I think it, it would be difficult to conduct a full criminal trial uh, online and, and not uh, in person in a court. But again, this was not that. Uh, this is a special plea by them, and it could be could have been argued on the papers. Them insisting that Jacob Zuma uh, had to be present uh, because he wanted to testify, you know, is, uh, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we, the entire country has, has uh, heard the, the allegations leveled against him that he, he just tries to, to postpone and delay matters, uh, you know, trying to kick the can down the road, so to speak. I don't think we need to to debate whether that is the case anymore. I think that when Jacob Zuma uh, appears in a court case, that is always going to be the strategy. And uh, one could argue whether that is the right or the wrong strategy. The fact of the matter is that the opposing side must adapt to it. Um, and in this instance, the first hurdle for the state to, to overcome is the fact that, that uh, they are saying that Advocate Billy Downer should be removed from the matter. And that point must first be argued and if they are successful, then the matter can proceed to trial. And in my opinion, I do think that if it does proceed to trial, then it will be in person. Jacob Zuma, Zuma will be uh, required to be present in court. And the fact that he's in custody now on another matter will not uh, uh, frustrate that. The Department of Correctional Services will be able to bring him to the, the, the corruption or the fraud trial in Peter Maritzburg in order for him to stand trial there. So I think all in all, uh, again, I've said this now, but I don't think we should read too much into it. I think that uh, on the 10th uh, of August, the decision will be made, um, you know, whether the special plea should be argued online or not. He's now asked, the judge has asked for submissions to be made by the Department of Correctional Services as well as by the parties, uh, you know, to, to either persuade him or dissuade him as to whether the matter should be proceeding online or not. Um, fact of the matter is that Jacob Zuma will remain in custody until then. And uh, let's see what the judge says on the tent. Very quickly, what are the implications then if the court does decide that he should be in court instead of a virtual uh, setting? Does that have any implications for other cases that have been heard virtually where someone could come back and say, but we didn't have a fair trial because it wasn't in person? Well, it could be argued by, by a, you know, a legal team that they insist on their, their client being present in court, and they could cite a decision then made if that is this, the decision by this court, because it is a decision by a high court. So it will be, it will set precedent if that is indeed the case. Um, uh, so that, that will be the effect on future cases. Yes, definitely it could be mm -hmm. used to the benefit or to the detriment of, of either parties. But just for clarity as well, um, uh, Judge Kuhn has confirmed that on the 4th of August, he will make his decision whether the matter will be proceeding virtually or, or in person. So if he does insist on, uh, or he, he confirms that it must be in person, the Department of Correctional Services will then have you know, ample time to make the necessary uh, uh, you know, um, rules and, and, and ensure that he is present on court on the 10th of August. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Appreciate it. That, of course, is Ulrich Rue from Ulrich Rue and Associates.